Hi everyone, it's Kristen. So in this video, we're going to be talking about Uncanny X-Men 2. Yes, I know, I'm behind, but I blame the post office because I just, like, literally just got this issue this week, like this past week. I think it was like Wednesday or Thursday. So yeah, because I ordered it in the mail and you can see it's kind of damaged, unfortunately. So for someone who collects comic books and wants them mint or near mint, you know, this would, of course, drive them crazy. I mean, I'm not happy about it, but I mean, you know, it's not, I don't really collect comic books to, um, for their value. I collect them because I want to read everything and I want, um, you know, to have, just have all of them. Like I'm a completist. I want, you know, I want the complete series. So it's not a huge deal, but it, you know, it's disappointing. It's also disappointing that I got it so late because everybody already knew, knows what happens. Um, but uh, like I said, I haven't gotten the third one, so I don't know what happens in the third one yet. And um, so some of you, some of the questions I raise in this video talking about this one, you guys might already know because you've read the third one. So, yeah, um, I hope it gets here soon because I want to know, like, what happens. I mean, reading these, I think Gail does a great job of telling a story because, like, I want to know what happens. Like, I'm, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. And, of course, we kind of already know that there's going to be a clash with Cyclops' team because uh, they have already released covers and saying, um, you know, they're, like, raid on Gray, Mul Gray Malkin Lane or something about um, the Xavier Mansion. So we know there's already going to be like a crossover, a four-issue crossover with with that. Um, so anyway, oh yeah, and I'm wearing this shirt. One of my friends got me, got this for me recently. Like I have really, I have really good friends. I have really, they're really great. Like uh, the same friend got me a lot of my stuff, a lot of the little accessories and stuff in the mansion that I'm making. Um, so I just, yeah, I appreciate it. Cause well, I mean, who doesn't like gifts? <laughs> so anyway, we open on this, which I'm like, I, you know, open this and I'm like, okay, what's going on? And so this is from Charles Xavier's diary. Um, and you know, he's talking to this girl, I would assume on a college campus. Cause he's talking about how, um, She's like, you look like a bookworm. What's your sport? And he's like, I'm a long distance runner. And she says, you know, care to go, you know, it's local custom to buy a girl a hot cuppa. I'm assuming that means like a cup of tea because uh, I have a couple friends that are from the UK and they say cuppa when they mean cup of tea. Um, so I'm assuming, and I like that they did this, the whole question mark, question mark, question mark, because of course we don't know who they are. And, you know, this leads you to believe that Nightcrawler is an issue and Jubilee hasn't shown up yet. So we'll see. Um, so this is where we left off. They're like, we need help. And um, Rogue is like, well, I want to help them, especially because... You know, just coming off of Harvey X, he died in the hospital and he, you know, warned them that something was coming. And so did that, you know, the dragon. Um, we don't really, we don't know what that is yet. I mean, gr granted, it's only the second issue. I doubt that there would be a big reveal already. So it's interesting that they're like, please, we need help please um and wolverine's like whoever they are they're out of line so immediately like they get into a fight this guy's like don't touch me and uh, this i guess that well i guess what starts it is the eye of agamotto just all of a sudden like flashes with this burst of energy and that basically is the start of the fight so you have wolverine versus this kid and then you have this girl, which she says Pegasus Knight here, which that makes me think of um, either a Valkyrie or She-Ra. Do you guys remember She-Ra? Not like the new series, but 
uh, the one I guess from the eighties. That's, I mean, that's the this Shira I like. Um, even though it's anyway, we won't get into that because that will make this video longer. <laughs> so, and she like this girl adjusts her watch or something. So I feel like from what everyone has said online, she has some kind of like speed. Uh, powers but I'm not sure like I don't understand the watch thing I guess that'll be explained later and this girl on the horse you know they are all uh, squaring off against each other and this girl on the horse says uh, mother says mother says that mutants are dirty goblins which all mutants are dirty which doesn't make sense because of what happens later in the issue like she reveals to you know, them, she's not a mutant, but the other three are mutants. So if she believes, as her mother says, that all mutants are dirty goblins, then why would she be with these three? Like, that makes no sense. Um, so, and then we have this kid who's super creepy. Um, because he's like, oh, Mr. Logan, you have killed such a great people. Great lot of people. They missed you so. And there's, like, this creepy mist and red eye figures with red eyes. And then we go back to Xavier's um, house, which is now a prison for mutants. And she's going through the inventory, and she stumbles upon the war room, where this guy takes her to the war room, the warden, and says, you know, no, we'll keep this. We can use this. We'll run the new mutant through it in the morning. So we go back to, you know... Charles and this girl Sarah and this, all of a sudden Sarah's like what color is your hair and he takes off his you know his beanie and doesn't have hair and she's like what color was your hair and he's like blonde and she's like oh I, I can't stand blondes um I don't know this just is a weird interaction and she kisses him on the forehead and says this will do nicely sweet boy just it's a weird interaction. I don't understand it at all. I really don't. I mean. Yeah. I don't. I mean. I Obviously. Maybe later. It'll make total sense. But. I don't understand it. And then. We go back to the prison. Um, and I think that's the only thing about this. That I'm not. Liking. Is that. It just switches like. One page is here, another page is flashback, another page is here. Like, too many, like, too many different storylines going on, I feel like. But, of course, there's a, I mean, there's a purpose for it. So, I'm going to, I'm going to trust Gail in what she's writing and just continue to follow what's, what's going on. So, we see that they have captured Siren, and they tell her, basically, um you know, cooperate or will burst your eardrums because they have a, um, have implanted something in her because she hears a buzzing and the warden says, would you like to be one of my trusted lieutenants or my, one of my trustees? And to me, this kind of sounds like the hound program, you know, um, for Rachel days of the future, um, past where, um, she, they, the humans use mutants mutant hounds they call them in order to find and kill other mutants that's that's kind of what this is sounding like because she we definitely know she employs mutants from the first issue issue so we go back to the fight and rogue says i won't hit a horse never but i'll hit a bratty little girl so <laughs> she you know hits her and knocks her off the horse and this guy says, Calico, I got you, which Calico seems like an odd name for a girl. I mean, when I think Calico, I think my cat, Dazzler, because she's a Calico cat. <laughs> um, so, you know, and the kid's focused on Calico and he doesn't see Wolverine. I love how rogue her eyes look right here. Like I said, I just really enjoy his art. Like uh, David Marquez, Mark. Mark was. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but I really enjoy his art. I think it's really, it's really good. Um, so, and then here we see like something's going on with her watch again. 
I don't know about the, I don't understand the watch. Um, I guess we'll find out later, I'm assuming. Um, Because people are saying she has some kind of, um, you know, speed powers. And so we're sitting, you know, everyone's getting for ready for round two. And, you know, the, the kid who seems to be the leader is like, if you're not going to help us, leave us alone. And then a voice says, or how about this? Everybody leaves everyone alone. And there you see Jubilee. And she's like, I can't believe I have to be the adult in this situation. <laughs> and I really like how like this these this page is drawn. I mean, it's super dramatic. I love that how her powers are portrayed, and I love like how she looks right here. Like I said, I just really like his art. I think it's really it's good. It's refreshing. It's different, but not too different. So apparently, Jubilee has been going um, and doing recon on the mansion. Um, Gray Malkin, that's what they're saying, like, because there's going to be the whole raid on a Gray Malkin Lane um, crossover series with Cyclops' team for four issues. So we kind of already know where this is headed because uh, they've already, like, promoted it um, so much. So, and Wolverine says, you know, I just, like, there's something wrong with them. Like, you know... They don't smell right. They smell like decay. And, um, yeah. And Rogue's like, look, I have to make a call that I need you guys to talk to these kids, find out why they're so spooked. And Wolverine's like, no, I'm done mentoring. I'm done being like the uncle, you know, or whatever. It's, it hasn't worked out. And, you know, she's like, why? You know, all those kids are still alive. And he's like, not all of them. So Rogue, you know, in her inter inner monologue is saying, you know, he's changed. He's come back changed. And then, um, you know, she says, maybe we all did. So Gambit being, you know, Gambit, he's like, if I talk to them, do I get a kiss? And, you know, of course, like, I, they're so cute together. And Jubilee's like, so what are you doing now, Rogue? Can you? She's like, calling the last guy I want to talk to, Cyclops. Um, and the only guy that I think will take the call, because, of course, remember, she tried to call Kitty. And Kitty's like, don't call me ever again. Like, I'm done with the X-Men. Don't, don't call me. And so they're like, okay, Gambit's like, okay, so what are your names, kids? Where are you from? Like I said, it was kind of a weird thing. I guess that the Eye of Agamotto was like the... The breaking point it like cut the tension and you know spurred action because they the kids came and said they wanted help and they didn't you know didn't do anything and wolverine's like i guess itching for a fight and he's like you know i, I guess combined with that and then the eye shooting out it just led to a fight which is kind of weird but you know so basically the young woman with the speed power says i'm sophia um from singapore and the guy says, Valentin from Buenos Aires. And um, the creepy guy says, Horotu um, from Kyoto. And then the girl called Calico says, Becca, she's from Virginia. And Wolverine says, he doesn't mean those names, kids. He means your the names you chose, your mutant names. Jitter, Ransom, Death Dream. Calico. And Calico says, only I'm not a mutant. And she's like, I don't have anywhere else to go, though. You know. And Jitter says, a voice called us here and said you could save us. Like I said earlier, when Calico was, like, Pegasus Knight or whatever, she's like, Mother said, you know, all mutants are dirty goblins. So why is she with these three mutants if she's not a mutant and views mutants in that, like, way? It doesn't make sense to me. But I guess... Like, if she has nowhere else to go. But if they heard her call them that, wouldn't they be offended? I mean, obviously, we're not going to find out yet. But, like, I have questions. <laughs> so, Wolverine in Japanese says, And why do you stink of death, little guy? The, you know, death dream. Um... 
And Ransom says, well, I'm here because I flipped a coin and it was you or the Brotherhood and it landed on you guys. So, but I'm beginning to wonder. And Jitter says, look, we know you're all hurting, but we need help. And we're just, you know, we're just kids, please. So Rogue calls Cyclops and of course Cyclops says, you know, no. Uh, just stay away from Grey Mulk in prison for now, the mansion. Uh, Jubilee's intel just concerned, confirms that we need more information. We need more data. And Rogue says, Charles is in there, and who knows who else? And Cyclops says, you know, stand down, Rogue. Please trust me. And then she says, she calls Kurt because she says, we need him. And like I said, I love how she's drawn here. It's a little bit kind of like anime inspired, but not not hugely heavily, you know, anime. But it just, I really like how it looks. I think it looks good. Um, so Jubilee's like, why do we need Kurt? And Rogue says, because, you know, um, it seems like we're the X-Men now. So Wolverine asked Jitter, so last question for you guys, who's hunting all of you? And Jitter says, how can you not know? It's the hag. I don't even think she's human. And that's who we saw like in issue one. And yeah, I don't know who she is. And then we turn to this page, last page, and we see the hag and she's brought them at the prison, a new mutant, like Fawn. From the first issue. And she's like, I've gone and brought you a Prezi for your collection, Warden. Tasty and fresh. And the Warden says, um, thank you for the gift, Sarah. So that's why we open on Xavier talking to this girl. Because I'm assuming this is the same Sarah. And otherwise, why in the world would they put that in here? So, of course, now the question is, how did she go from this, you know, beautiful, young, blonde girl to this, like, grotesque, ugly thing who seems very single-minded that she only wants to capture mutants? So, obviously... Like I said, I'm intrigued. I want to know more. I want to know, like, what's going on. Um, and that's the sign of a good story that, you know, you want to know more. And then you flip to this page, and here is issue three with Nightcrawler. Yay. Like, Nightcrawler is one of my favorite male um, X-Men characters. Because he just, I always love the juxt juxtaposition of him looking like a demon and having such strong faith. So, anyway. <laughs> I hope, I hope I get my copy of X, Uncanny X-Men 3 soon, because I've already, like I said, heard some spoilers. I mean, you can't, like, avoid online completely and not hear spoilers. It just, it's impossible, unless you stay offline completely. So, I don't know everything that happens in the issue, thankfully, but I just, I hope I get my, yeah, I hope I get my comic soon, so I can actually read and learn what happens so i hope you guys will join me for the next issue and for all my other videos and if you haven't checked out my the mansion the x-men mansion i made uh, i think you should definitely check that out i'm pretty like i'm pretty proud of it i'm still working on it i who knows when i'll be finished honestly it's a huge project but so thank you for joining me and i hope you subscribe and tune in next time until then, bye.